the point is that we are proud of our record as a Absolutely, Alison Fowlis, spokesperson for the SNP on this. How dare you, Robert Jenrick? On Tuesday in the House of Commons, the Home Secretary morphed from leaky suitor, hapless, honest Bob, to answer an urgent question on this Migration Bill's economic impact assessment. Well, after Yvette Cooper tore honest Bob to shreds on this, SNP's Alison Thoulis then got her chance to tear this bill to bits and conclusively express the reasons why Scotland should get their independence. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. The Tory Illegal Migration Bill has almost completed its journey through Parliament and only yesterday did the Home Office deign to publish this ludicrous economic impact assessment, which is revealing in what it omits as what it includes. Nothing about their backlog they've created, all about the boats. We know the cost of this cruel, cruel Tory ideology is £169,000 per soul deported, costing more than if people were allowed to stay. We know that these figures uh, for asylum processing claims are estimated to take four years, but we don't know the cost of the set-up costs for the wildly expanding detention estate, or of those left in immigration limbo, or of staffing in the Home Office or the Ministry of Justice to deal with this. They say that this will save money because victims of modern slavery will no longer be entitled to support. How despicable. This is an egregious waste of public money in a cost of living crisis. It fails to recognise the, the, the value of human potential. We've just celebrated Refugee Festival in Scotland, an incredible experience which celebrates the contribution of those who come to our shores for sanctuary. And it's increasingly evident, increasingly evident, the only way that Scotland can uphold our humanitarian values is by regaining our independence. As Winnie Ewing would have it, stop the world, Scotland wants to get on. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm delighted that the Honourable Lady celebrated Refugee Week. I don't know if any refugees came to it because the SNP don't house refugees in Scotland. The point is that we are proud of our record as a country. Since 2015, we've welcomed over half a million people into the United Kingdom under a Conservative government, seeking genuine sanctuary for war and persecution, individuals coming from Hong Kong and Ukraine and Syria and Afghanistan. The SNP continually pose as humanitarians, but we all know the truth is that at every single opportunity, they fail to live up to their fine words. If the SNP cared about this, they would welcome asylum seekers into their own part of the United Kingdom. But they don't. Well, after his drivel and nonsense and insulting reply, I had a hunch Alison Thurlis wasn't going to take that lying down. And she duly didn't. Point of order, Alison Thurlis. Point of order, Alison Thulis. Thank you very much, Madam Deputy Speaker. The, minister, the Immigration Minister said, I don't know if any refugees came to Refugee Week because the SNP don't house refugees in Scotland. Madam Deputy Speaker, that statement uh, seems to me as insulting as it would be inaccurate. Um, and I would ask uh, for some clarification on that because, first of all, Madam Deputy Speaker, it's not up to the Scottish Government. It's up to the Home Office where people are dispersed, not the Scottish Government. Uh, Glasgow supports around 5,000 asylum seekers. Scotland took well over its population share of Ukrainians. Every single local authority in Scotland took people as part of the Syrian uh, a resettlement scheme. He mentioned also the, that the luxury cruise ship, which was uh, contracted by the Scottish Government in Leith uh, to house uh, Ukrainians. Now, Ukrainians are on that ship were afforded comprehensive wraparound support. Yeah. And I would be very interested in knowing from the Scottish from the Minister, whether he would be offering refugees that same comprehensive <laughs> wraparound support on that basis, because if you weren't, I could see why the Scottish Government would be nervous about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, further to that point of order, Minister. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Well, perhaps it would be helpful if I sent the Honourable Lady a copy of the letter that I recently wrote to the Scottish Government, which debunks uh, many of the uh, issues that they had raised with regard to the vessel in Leith. And uh, if there's still time, she could ask them to change their mind, because I think if they're willing to accommodate Ukrainians, surely, given how strongly they feel about asylum seekers, they'd want to do the same. Um, I'm not entirely... Let me speak. I'm, I'm not entirely sure that um, anybody is asking me to do anything. It seems to be that we're slightly prolonging the debate. And I have to say, it isn't really a matter of for the chair, 
um, to kind of adjudicate um, between the two different points of view. So I really hope that if the Honourable Lady wants to come back again, we're just not simply going to be exchanging further views on what has already been said, because a point of order is directed to me to ask me to do something, and I'm saying that I think, first of all, the Honourable Lady clearly felt um, that she wanted to put some points on the record. She has done that. The Minister has responded, and I think the House will want to move on. So I would urge the Honourable Lady, if she has actually got something further to add that is relevant to the Chair, but otherwise she might like to feel that she has put her points on the record. Madam Deputy Speaker, and thank you for that. The Minister implied at the dispatch box that Scotland does not take refugees. That is clearly a point of accuracy. It is inaccurate. And I would ask Madam Deputy Speaker if he could withdraw that comment. Again, um, it's, it's not a matter for the Chair. The Honourable Lady has made her point. Um, if the Minister felt that he had said anything inaccurate, or had inadvertently misled the House, he would be expected to correct the record at the first opportunity. Um, and I think we will leave it at, at that. Well done, Alison. Fantastic passion and compassion and empathy from her and our honest Bob's reply was nothing short of pathetic and quite vile, if you ask me, and quite insulting to Scotland, if you ask me. Now, I don't know too much about these barges, but I get the feeling that they're not really the answer, are they? I certainly wouldn't want to spend months stuck on one of these barges, would you? Well, after John MacDonald had highlighted whichever minister's behaviour was unacceptable on Thursday's business of the House, SNP MP for Paisley and Renfrewshire North, Gavin Newlands, brought up what our honest Bob had said to his SNP colleague Alison Thewlis to the Leader of the House, Penny Mordaunt, and then asked a very interesting question. Uh, yesterday's response to my old friend, the member for Glasgow Central from the Immigration Minister, uh, drew a pretty furious response from the Scottish Refugee Council, amongst others, when he said that the SNP don't house refugees in Scotland. Mr Speaker, the truth is that Scotland has housed more Syrian and Ukrainian refugees per head uh, than his own government. Uh, moreover, that, that largest asylum-seeking uh, hotel in the UK is in action in my constituency as well. This needs to stop. Uh, Mr Speaker, when you or your deputies are asked about the accuracy of a, a ministerial response, you quite rightly say it is not a matter for the Chair. So, therefore, can I ask the Leader uh, for a debate on changing the standing orders of this House so we can make ministers more accountable for the answers they give at that dispatch box? Yeah. 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 Uh, well, this is a, a timely question because uh, the Procedure Committee has uh, produced a report uh, that has just come out on correcting uh, the record. And actually, their recommendations are that uh, the obligations on ministers should be extended to all members uh, of this House. So we take these matters uh, very seriously. It's very clear uh, if incorrect information has been uh, uh, given to the House. I don't, I don't know the details of the particular uh, uh, matter he raises, but if, if there is incorrect uh, information that's given to this House, the record uh, should be corrected. Uh, and in my experience, that is what ministers do. Can you name a minister who has corrected the record, Pound and Penny? I cannot. The Home Secretary hasn't done it yet, and there's also a myriad of ministers and MPs from all sorts of parties haven't done, haven't either, have they? But for me, Gavin Newlands is absolutely right about our honest Bob, isn't he? Whenever anyone from the SNP poor calls into this ridiculous migration bill, he throws that humanitarian nimbyism nonsense back at them, doesn't he? For me, it's just a complete waste of taxpayers' money, isn't it? But what do you guys think? Let me know down below. And well done, Alison Thoulis, for not standing for his insulting behaviour. Great question and good point for, by Gavin Newlands as well. Right, I shall leave the video here and I shall bid you farewell and take care, my friends.